Sega. Hey everybody, it's the Musical Gamer, and welcome one and all to my new Let's Play of Valkyria Chronicles for the PS3. This gem, this gem of a game, oh, this game, a really, really wonderful tactical RPG made by Sega, and this is also one of the PS3's top games as of now, if my facts are correct. Also one of the earlier ones that came out for it too. This game is going to be a little bit different from what you've seen on my channel so far, because I haven't really done tactical RPGs all that much. In fact, really the closest tactical RPG I think I've done has been Pikmin, and that's not even an RPG, that's just strategy. But this game has some really interesting uh, points to it. Really good game, great story, great characters, a beautifully orchestrated soundtrack and really, really interesting art design. I have to admit, the where they went with the art design was really, really interesting, and it worked out well, too. I'll just throw that out there, but I won't gush or criticize the game now. I'll save that for the ending credits when we get there. Now, I'm gonna be handling this a little bit differently from everything else I've done, how everything's been in like kind of like, you know, a, an episodic format. It's still gonna happen with this, but the way the game is designed, there's chapters. Uh, actually, it's kind of like we're going through a book uh, in of itself, so you'll see that when we start it. But I'm probably going to be doing things in chapters, which also means I'll probably rec be recording a lot of this in advance. So, yeah. Most of this will probably be recorded in advance. I don't know how far in advance I'll get to before I start uploading all these, but I'll try to get at least a couple of chapters in before I upload the first video, which this will be the first video. And I think I've talked your ear off long enough. It's it's been it's been long enough. You guys have been sitting here for 5 minutes watching the intro and hearing me blather on. So, let's go to options and set some things up, shall we? Um Okay, all those are right. I definitely want subtitles on. You can switch between English and Japanese. I actually do recommend playing through this in Japanese first, or... If, if you play through the game twice, play it once in English, play it once in Japanese, because I always like the original, the original dubbing. The English subtitles will still be there, so... 
Um, maybe lower that just a tad. Yeah, that should be good. That should do us nicely. All right, cool. And let us start the game. We shall now fight for Galia's independence. The year was 1935 EC. Wait, I thought I turned on subtitles. Two powers oh, there we the go. Continent. <laughs> In the Never east, mind. The sun rose over the autocratic East European Imperial Alliance, otherwise known as the Empire. Ooh, they sound official. In the west, a network of loosely allied democracies formed the Atlantic Federation. Both powers depended on a precious mineral, Ragnite, for their survival. Does this sound familiar to you guys? Or look familiar to you guys? They basically turned Europe and Russia into their own little... their own little things here. It's kind of funny. In fact, it even looks similar to Europe and Asia. However, this part did not happen in actual history. If we had lances like those, I'd be so happy. I would buy one immediately. Gaining ground in early victories and putting the Federation in defensive. How could you not want one of those anti-tank lances? Anti-tank lances. Speak proper English, gamer. In neighboring Gallia, a peaceful principality along the sea, they found their next victim. Gallia had long maintained its neutrality in the tensions between the two superpowers. But the rich stores of Ragnite under the Gallian soil proved too tempting for the Empire. It amassed troops along the eastern border and invaded with all the force of an avalanche. Well, that's not good. That actually quite sucks. Not going to lie. Prologue. Gallia to arms. And here we go. A new episode has been added. This is actually the main menu of the game. <laughs> It's kind of funny. This is this is very interesting how they did it. It's kind of like a book. And you go through each chapter. This is the prologue, for now. But we will be going through all, I believe, 18 chapters. 19, I guess, if you count the prologue as its own chapter. So, yeah, that's how we do it. You just select a kind of picture, and you go through it. Like how that's labeled 1 on the bottom right-hand corner of that thing where the cursor is over. That's the first scene of the prologue. And you can see the other three that are kind of faded. There's a two, three, and four. You just select each one as you go through. Now, also, unlike other games I've done, how I'm normally quiet during a lot of the cutscenes, uh, I'm probably not going to be doing as much of that in this one as you could most undoubtedly tell from the intro. It's just because if I stay quiet for cutscenes, which is actually a good bulk of this, I'm going to be quiet a lot during this Let's Play, and it's not going to exactly be that entertaining. At least, I, I, I like to at least think that I entertain a few of my viewers out there, so that's why I probably will be talking. That's why I definitely wanted the subtitles on. So, just in case I'm blathering over something, you guys can still read, or if you can possibly hear, what's going on uh, underneath me. So, let's start the first part of the prologue. These first couple chapters are actually going to be really quick, so I expect to get them done uh, in an episode each. Later ones! Oh no, they're going to take a lot longer. Outside the Gallian border town of Brule. It looks like people are being relocated for something. War displacement. Residents are leaving the town before the invasion. Headed inland towards the capital. War. War never changes. I haven't been down this road in years. It really hasn't changed very much. I'll take your word for it, um, mysterious stranger. Who oh. obviously will have no effect on the plot. Already? Nope, not at all. You kidding? He's wearing a he's wearing a messenger bag. How can people who wear messenger bags have anything to do with the plot? Beautiful. Starting early this year. You're heading upstream, huh? How's the water? He also seems to have a fetish for fish. 
Honestly, I've never really cared much for fish. I don't know, fish just aren't for me. Freeze. Nuts. Put your hands in the air, slowly. Listen, officer, I can explain. Ooh, hello, officer. Haven't seen you around before. What's your name? Um, my name's Welkin, and you are... The one with the gun. We're with the Brutown Watch. Touche. I'm Alicia. Alicia Melkiot. So, I'm wondering what you've been writing in that little book you've got there. Imperial spies are in the area. <laughs> this book is nothing, really. I was just sketching the fish and, uh, you know... Uh... <laughs> yes, oh, I know. And you know there's a war on, don't you? There's a war? War? Where? All where? Right war? Then, war? Where? Mr. Where? Artist. War? Artist. We'll talk where? about fish sketching war, war, down war. at the station. Take him away. Uh, uh, thanks, fish. Oh, don't blame the fish. Great. Not even 15 minutes into the game and we're already incarcerated. Oh, this is a great start now, isn't it? Well, part two. The Imperial Tech. Oh, lord, this doesn't sound like it's going to be pleasant now, does it? Well, anyway, meet Welkin and Alicia. Kind of the poster boys for this game. Flowers, bugs, and fish. You're not bad with a pen, are you? I have to say, they're really very good. Thank you. So you see, I really was just sketching. Maybe. Or, this could be some kind of secret code. And I intend to take my time finding out for sure. Oh, you've got to be kidding me. Great. Alicia, Guys, you're just you? you're just ridiculous and someone well, who knows us. Timing is perfect. What have you gotten yourself into now, Welkin? Wait. Don't you live at the old general's house? That's right. I'm General Gunther's daughter, Isara. You do know everyone's supposed to evacuate, right? Yes. I'm aware of that. My brother's here to help me move to the capital, but that may be difficult. I mean, unless you're willing to let him go, that is. Huh? Oh, don't give me that face, Alicia. You're in the wrong. I apologize, but I was just doing my job, you know. I saw you with the notebook and thought you were a spy. Again, I'm really sorry about that. Thanks. Don't worry about it. I can see how I might have looked a little suspicious. Oh, you think, Welkin? Welks has a real passion for observing nature. That's why he's studying it at the university, right? Guilty as charged. And I get so into it sometimes I forget where I am or that somebody might be watching me. <laughs> Gunfire! Uh oh! Gunshots! Everyone, keep your heads down! We're getting off to a bang! Oh god, we're really getting off to a big- Oh god, frag out, run! Oh god, death, run! Run! Flee, townspeople, flee! Uh, oh. This is not going well, is it? Welkin, you can handle a gun, right? Well, I can handle a gun, alright, but not the one you're thinking of. Ooh! They're probably just a small scouting team. We should be able to take them out. I'm with you. All right, let's do this. First mission of the game. All right. And a new episode has been added. And now the game is going to teach us how to save. Yeah, I might as well show you. If you hit the triangle button while you're in the book screen, you go to the menu. You can select chapter, tab select, save, options, title screen, and close the menu. You could just hit the circle button too. More options will actually be added later, I think. Or is that... Uh, no, that might be something different I'm thinking of. Never mind, we'll get to that point when we get to it. Anyway, let's just start this mission. I am eager. I am eager and waiting to serve my country. Let's go! For Galia! Okay, here's the plan. And here's when the tactical part of the game comes in. We have to eliminate the Imperial Scouts that are approaching Brule. We'll deploy from that blue flag position down in the south and take out all three of them. Yep, a whole whopping three. Well, this is the game's tutorial anyway, so can't really expect there to be too much now, can you? We must eliminate all enemies to clear the mission. 
And now you get your victory conditions and failure conditions. Victory, all enemies must be defeated. Failure, if Welkin dies, Alicia dies, or if 20 turns pass. They do have time limits on these Let's get missions. Just stay calm and get it done. However, if you have to spend more than 20 turns on the prologue mission, you quite clearly need help. Psychiatric help. I see three of them. That's three too many. Stay sharp. You got it, boss lady. Listen a second. There's something I should explain. Oh, if I can explain this just, just as well. Just skipping through that. Anyway, now, what we have here is the area map. Uh, these blue figures here are our characters. There's Alicia, there's Welkin, and there we have one town watchman with us. Um, in the bars on the bottom right, you can see, with Alicia right now, that red circle with that weird symbol in it. That's the symbol for a scout. Uh, I'll go into class details when that actually becomes pertinent. Because there's really only going to be two types we're going to be facing now. Uh, until we get to the real meat of the game. Which isn't until, I think, like, Chapter 3. So, I'll go over that then. Uh, you can see also that her HP is the green bar. She has 230 health. Welkin has 250. The Town Watchman has 180. The Sora, I'm sorry, sack of shit. And also, we have those little shield things on the upper left-hand corner of her portrait. We, you also see we have those on the top bar of the screen next to the turn number. Those are our command points. We have to spend command points to move our troops. And to move our troops, we use that orange bar on the bottom, which is called our AP. Uh, I think that's ability points? We'll find out as soon as I select somebody, but he, see here this red symbol? This is an enemy scout. 110 HP. Scouts are really not that difficult. I'll just explain scouts because we're going to be seeing a lot of them here in the beginning. Scouts are exactly what they are. Scouts, they're very good for recon. Uh, their weapons are not exactly s the strongest. They are they do pack an okay punch. Uh, they're also not bad shots. So they're semi-accurate. They also have a lot of AP. So you can move them around the map quite a bit. In fact, um... These missions also have rankings at the end. The better you rank, the better rewards you get. To clear this uh, map for an A ranking, you need to finish this all in one turn. So, I'm going to abuse the system, and I'm going to do this. I'm just going to select Welkin, because he has the most health. Ready to go. Hit the uh, X button on a figure, and, uh, oh, action points. That's what the AP stands for. And, yeah, the bar goes down as we move, blah, 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 blah. There is cover, which I will be going over very very shortly well anyway uh, you can rotate the camera with the right stick uh, the game really works in turns so nothing is really real time exactly it's hard to explain it becomes real time as you get close to an enemy you'll see when I approach that scout you can see the little cursor that's over him it's marking the enemy for me thank you game that's very nice uh, if you hit R1 you go into target mode and you can well attack And I'm just going to skip through that, but be careful. Uh, you can attack. You can move the targeting arrow, uh, or the cursor with the left stick, or the D-pad. If you use the D-pad on the PS3, you get more precision aiming. Like, you move more slowly. The stick makes you move really, really fast, just for, like, quickly spinning around or something. Uh, going into targeting mode also stops all form of actions being taken outside in the field. So, if you're being shot at, which I'll show you quickly as we approach those sandbags, um, you can actually stop them from shooting by going into targeting mode. This can also be abusive, too. There's a lot of things that you can abuse in this game, I'm not gonna lie. The orange circle around the uh, crosshair is your area of hitting. Basically, anywhere within that orange circle is where your bullets can hit. So, obviously, with the, which is the case with any sort of shooter game, the closer you get, the more accurate you're gonna be. Uh, if you hit the square button while in the shooting mode, you can switch through different tools. Unfortunately, we don't have any, so I'll go over that more in detail when we do get things like grenades and spanners and ragnade, which is like healing. Uh, to shoot, you hit the, the X button while on the screen, not the R1. I'm going to back out by hitting the circle button, however, and I'm going to run to those sandbags like the Dickens. Run, welcome, run! Fast! 
fast! Go fast! As we approach the sandbags, this guy's gonna... Oh, he's... Wait, no, he's facing the wrong way. If you get near cover, like sandbags, or there's gonna be other stuff I think you can use other than sandbags, you can crouch. What crouching does is uh, it increases your defense by a crap ton. You will barely take any damage from bullets, especially with better armor. Uh, and also, uh, you can't be knocked over. Knocked over is something that can happen if they blow you up. Like, quite literally blow you up with grenades or mortars or anything that goes boom in the night. Anyway, since this guy's got our, his back turned us, to us like an idiot, we can shoot him. And actually, yeah, I might want to get a little closer, not gonna lie. Uh, there are also different parts of the body to target. Uh, the little symbols up there you can see to kill, that's how many shots it'll take to kill him if we shoot him in the back. However, if we aim for the head, it'll take two shots. So you're always gonna, gonna wanna try to get headshots when you can. Um, more often than not, a scout will get a headshot even at this range, even though the margin of error looks pretty big. Scout is five shots for each, each uh, shooting phase you go through. You can only attack once per uh, command point you use on a unit. So be careful and make sure your attacks count when, they, when you use them. Uh, and no, they don't stack, so if you were to pick a unit, not attack, and then pick the unit again, you don't get two attacks. So don't even think about it. Uh, I'm actually going to get a little closer. And he still is his back to us like a dumb. Awesome! And now you get to see how... Well, actually, I guess I'll talk about the top bar again as well. The two kill the shots I've explained. The versus person in that circle shows what your weapon is effective against. Uh, the scout's rifle is very good at, uh, at anti-personnel. However, it is not good against armor, because we will be going up against things like tanks and bunkers and gatling guns and all that good stuff, and it doesn't have an area effect. Area effects usually are only grenades and mortars, though there is some other stuff that you can use later for something like that. Anyway, time to shoot you in the back of the head like a true war hero. Go! Take this. See what I mean? Even though there was a pretty large margin of error, he was able to easily kill him. Anyway. Yes! Yes, Welkin. Yes. Um, you could end the turn here by hitting the circle button, but because we want to finish this up in one turn to get the A rank, we'll just keep running. And now the game will explain about using cover, not like I just did like three minutes ago. Thank you, game. Okay. Can we make it to the sandbag? I think we can. Oh, crouch. Okay. Ending the action now. And now that's where Welkin is on the field. You can't look at the top-down view of the map like this when you're controlling a unit, so make sure you plan out your moves carefully before you select one. Because you might miss an enemy that's hiding in cover. Like if there's a building here or something and the enemy was behind it. Usually they won't show up on your map unless you have a line of sight on them. Which is what these little uh, lines are. Okay, so we've only got two left, and Welkin can easily take care of these guys. Ready to go. But as you can see, this guy here is shooting at me because he sees me. But because now I'm in the targeting mode, he only got one shot off of me before he had to stop. Because that stops all actions. Um, I'm actually going to have to get a little closer. And they do have to reload after they empty their clip, so... That is another thing to keep in mind. After you, if you, Once you've played this enough and you know how many bullets each weapon has and their clip size, you can then figure out when is a good time to move from cover to cover when facing enemies and they are looking at you and shooting at you. Anyway, time to shoot you in the face! Good night, Irene! If your name was Irene. And quite frankly, you don't look like a woman. Yes. At least I hope not. Oh god. And now Welkin's going to be a freaking berserker and just charge this guy right up into his face like so. Because I always find this entertaining. Here we go. Hi there, buddy. I I hope I hope you like um I hope you like bullets. Yep. Really, really simple first operation. But like I said, it's just supposed to be the basic tutorial. I don't see any more of them. 
There's still going to be a lot of more, tu lot more tutorials in the next few battles, but not as heavy as this. This basically tells you how to move around the map, how to kill people, and how to not get killed. And also how to read the map, too. So anyway, encounter at Brule Combat Report. We have gotten an A rank. We get uh, 80 experience and 200 DCT, which is the currency of the game. That's the base results. And for getting an A rank, we get 160 EXP extra and an extra 400 DCT. So it's pretty nice. Uh, the higher your rank, the more clear bonus you get, the lower the less. Uh, if you get anything lower than a C rank, you don't get a clear bonus at all. So keep that in mind. And now we can finish off the prologue. With style, might I add? With freaking style. I wonder how many bullet wounds Welkin has from that last charge. It's like Custer's last stand, only in watercolor. That is the style of painting, by the way, that they did for the game. It's like a watercolor painting. There's no other sign of the enemy. Oh good, we chased him off. Good. Now go keep watch and stay alert. Yes, ma'am. Uh what should we do with the bodies, ma'am? Burn them. We'll bury them. Oh, okay, bury them. That that works too. I would say we should so put them on a begun. pike and parade them around the town, but I'll do whatever it seems very to protect the people. It seems very town. Machiavellian, so probably I'll not. Do it. Even going to war, I'll do it. What are those? Seeds from the lion's paw. It blooms white, small, simple, and strong. I want to be able to remember, once the war is over, that it wasn't all just people killing people. That even in war, there was also new life. On the 15th day of the third month of the year 1935, the Empire began its assault in earnest. A formal declaration of war was made upon Gallia. Though it was only a small front in a massive continental assault, what followed would prove that a tiny nation could best a military giant. These events would tell a story of tragedy hidden in the mists of time. A story of courage and of trust of persecution and hate and of love blooming even through the flames of war what follows is a record of this conflict and of those who fought lived and died Irene Collar on the Galleon front welcome to the world the story of Valkyria Chronicles.